Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Lots of nice, beautiful, smiling faces out there. Uh, today's message is called The Father's Business. So please turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 2, verse 41. So, uh, question for you, does uh, anybody near, anybody here know how many days we have left until we get to Thanksgiving? Anybody? No? A lot? No, it's only 53 days until turkey, stuffing, pumpkin pie, and lots of football on TV. 53 days. Great family time, traditions. Got some awesome traditions for Thanksgiving, don't you? I'm pretty sure you do. Uh, has anybody started making plans for Thanksgiving yet? Where you're going? No? Who you're having over? Some, some of you guys are. Some of you guys have made plans yet. Okay? Now, that means that I only have about 50 days left to get the Christmas decorations out. Okay? Yes. So now, how many days do we have until Christmas? Anybody know? 80. She nailed it. Wow. I didn't think anybody was going to answer that. Was it you or you? I thought you said it. Yeah, it's 80. 80 days until we celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. 80 days until we open presents with our families. Uh, 80 days until we once again gather around with our family and friends to eat a lot of food. Food that's going to help us all get round. Right? And more football. Okay. Um, who here started shopping for Christmas? A few of us. Okay. Making plans, preparations for Christmas. Anybody traveling for Christmas? No, 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 no Christmas travelers? Okay. All right. Um, do you notice that people tend to get crazy planning and preparing for uh, these holidays? Have you noticed that? They put a lot of effort in preparation for planning and preparing for these holidays. A lot of work. So we're talking about Christmas. But I want to talk real quickly about my wife, Christy. My beautiful, amazing wife. Okay. What did you do wrong? The list is too long to go over that, okay? We, we only have a little bit of time here. Um, but she, she really does love me, okay? So this, this December, um, right near Christmas, we celebrate our 25th wedding anniversary. Okay? Um, and she has chosen to, uh, let, let me change that. She hasn't chosen to, she's agreed to go see the New England Patriots play in Houston on December 1st for our anniversary. That's what she's allowing us to do <laughs> on our anniversary. Instead, instead of Greece or, or something like that, we get to go see the New England Patriots play on December 1st. That is how much she loves me. We're going to fly to Houston to go see that game. So she must truly love me for putting up with me for 25 years that on our anniversary celebration we're going to go watch football. Okay, now she only has a passing interest in the Patriots and a passing interest in football. She has any interest at all because of her love for me. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? So since we're talking about the New England Patriots, let me ask you another question. How many days until the Patriots play in the Super Bowl? Now, if you're a fan like me, if you're a fan like me, I'd say 119 days, 4 hours and 37 minutes until kickoff. Okay? But here's the thing. As a fan... I really don't know if they'll ever make it. Again, they might not never make it back again. This could be Tom Brady's last year playing. We don't know what, what's going to happen for them. See, that's why as a fan, <laughs> my amazing wife understands how, how special it is for me to be able to go see the New England Patriots play, especially when it could be one of the last times that Tom Brady gets to play. So we made this plan to go see them. 
You see, we got busy doing things uh, so that we could go. We prepared to go see them. She's so amazing. We've already booked our flight. We've booked our hotel room. We've got a rental car. We've got the tickets to the game. We're pretty prepared. And I'm pretty sure that before, before December 1st gets here, we'll probably have another few things planned as well because she likes to be prepared. Luke, chapter 2, verse 41. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And jo Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, seeking him. Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. All who heard them were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. So another question. Who here knows when Christ is returning? No one. The Bible says he will return like a thief in the night. It also says that no one will know the day or the hour. But he is returning, and on that glorious day, the righteous dead will be raised to life and taken up to heaven along with the righteous who are still alive on the earth. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, then those who are alive and remain, will shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. The Bible says that we should be on guard, watching and preparing, preparing until the day of the Lord. The Bible says in Luke 21, 34, Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and anxieties of life, and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. In Revelation 6, when Jesus returns to earth, the wicked who are left alive, those who reject him and his commandments, they're going to call for the rocks and the hills to fall on them because they cannot look upon the face of Christ. 2 Thessalonians 1.7 the word of God declares that the wicked will be destroyed with an everlasting destruction because they did not know God or obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus is coming back to reward the inhabitants of the earth and bring many back to heaven with him. The Bible also says in Matthew, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of of the world. Now my wife and I, we're preparing, we're making plans to go to a football game. People are preparing, they're shopping, they're getting ready for Christmas. They're preparing, they're getting ready for Thanksgiving. We're already buying gifts. We're getting ready, we're making preparations. But I've got one more question for you. Are you making plans to see your family and friends in heaven? Luke 49, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Are you about the father's business? When we look at the whole life of Jesus, we can see the great interest and love that God the Father takes in the work of salvation. Jesus called it his business, his father's business. See, even though Jesus came to earth to redeem us and has set that perfect example for us to follow, it wasn't his own business, but it was the Father's business. 
See, the great heart of the Father was so set on our salvation that the Son had the same heart as the Father. Jesus Christ, being about the Father's business, became our substitute, our guarantee for our salvation, Amen. and he became our everything. It is his Father's business. Luke 49. Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my Father's business? Our Savior breathed those words. Did you not know that I must be about my Father's business? So I want to encourage you all with as much passion and intensity and a sense of urgency as, as I can to labor to have that same heart, that same spirit, that we would all be able to say that why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my Father's business? See, none of us are going to know when Christ is going to return. And when I listen to the news, I worry that it's not going to be too much longer. That's why it's so important that we prepare. That we are busy about his work, his business, and making sure that our family and friends will be with us in heaven. Christ could come back tomorrow. And I bet we all have friends and family members and co-workers that we don't know if they're going to be in heaven with us. We probably don't know. So I've got a little confession to make. I've actually asked God not to come back until I have the chance to walk Sophia down the aisle and dance with her at her wedding. Now, the way the world's going, I'm not sure if God's going to answer that prayer. But the one thing I do know is that if he comes back before I have that chance, I will be able to dance with her in heaven. But a sad thing is, I didn't know that until a few days ago. She didn't know that without a doubt, 100%, that she was going to heaven. Now, she spent her whole life in church. We've read her Bible stories. We've watched all sorts of Christian movies with her. She's been to church camp every summer since she was old enough to go. She spent almost every Sunday for about four years in kids' church with me teaching her. But she didn't know 100% for sure that she was going to heaven. She should have known. It was in the stories, the verses we read, the classes I taught, the summer camps. It was all there for her. But for some reason... She didn't realize, she didn't understand and have that belief 100% for sure that she was going to heaven. Sophia belongs to this uh, Christian club at school called Good News Club. It's an amazing uh, after school club for the kids. And uh, all of our kids have been involved in this club. And last week she brought home this questionnaire from, from the club. It asked questions like, have you asked Jesus into your heart? How old were you? Her answers were great. She replied, yes, I, I have asked Jesus into my heart at church camp, and she was eight years old. So she had asked Christ into her heart when she was eight, but she didn't understand. She didn't know that she was going to heaven. Seeing that written down, that she had accepted Christ into her life when she was eight, filled my heart with joy. But then I read that last question and her answer on the page. If Christ came back today, do you know what would happen? And this was the multiple choice question. The choices were nothing. I think I would go to heaven. I 100% know that I would go to heaven. And I don't know. And she marked, I don't know. I was heartbroken. I felt like I had failed her as a father and a teacher. But her smile, it quickly healed my heart. Because she asked me with a big smile, she goes, so I'm going to heaven? And I said, yes, absolutely. And I recited John 3.16 with her. I explained to her what it meant. And I shared some more verses with her. And then I told her that she would get to meet her grandma Charlotte, whom she's never met in heaven, and she would get to see her grandpa Jerry again when she got there. Now, Sophia is so amazing and so tender-hearted 
that with her beautiful emotion that she has, she started crying. And not just crying, she started bawling. You mean, I get to meet Grandma Charlotte? And Christy, she's in the other room and she heard this, and she's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I'm like, nothing, nothing's wrong. No, what happened? What, 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 what's going on? What happened? Nothing, dear, everything's fine. Everything's fine. I, I wanted Sophia to go tell her, but Sophia's like, no, you, you can tell her later. You can tell her later. So as we sat on, that, on her bed in her room and we hugged, I had one of the best moments of my life. Because I knew that my little girl knew that without a doubt, 100%, she would be in heaven. She knew it. So this rekindled, fueled a fire in me that at every moment, in every place, I need to be about the Father's business. Not just for our love of our family and our friends, but out of obedience to God. So we all have a duty, we all have an obligation to be about the Father's business. So look at Jesus. What compelled him to give himself up for us? What empowered him to be able to make that kind of sacrifice? So when Jesus took on human form and became lowly, like us, except without sin. He also took on the form and the spirit of an obedient servant. He became the greatest servant of all. He was so obedient to the Father, and he had the heart of the Father. And he was obedient all the way to the cross and beyond. Listen to how beautiful John describes this in John 10, 17. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. He received this command from his father, and we have received commands from Christ to love one another just as Christ has loved us. To go and make disciples of all people. To pick up our own cross and follow him. And deny ourselves. I've got such a love for my family. And my heart aches sometimes because I'm not sure if all of my family is going to heaven. My heart aches for some of my friends and my co-workers. Because if Christ were to come back today... I don't know if they would be in heaven. I don't know if they know where they would be. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So this thief, he's only coming to kill and destroy our family, our friends, and our co-workers, while Christ has come to save them. John 10, 12 says, The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. See, we are not meant to be the hired hand who flees when the wolf or the thief comes. We are not meant as a body, as a church, to be a people who care nothing for those that are lost around us. We are called to be followers of Christ, imitators of Christ. John 10, 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. 
they too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. So my prayer today is that when we speak, they will hear God. When people see us work, and they see us live, that they will not have to ask where we've been or what we've been up to. But they will know without a doubt that we have been about the Father's business. And most importantly, that they will have seen the love of Christ in our lives and want that too. Amen. So when the time comes, they will have little doubt that 100% they will be sure that they will go to heaven. So Father God, let everything we say and do point to you. You know, maybe today, someone here or watching online is feeling a little bit of a tug in their heart. Maybe that still quiet voice is calling you. And you want to know, personally, 100% without a doubt, that you will go to heaven. If there's anybody here, I'd like everyone here to close your eyes, please, bow your heads. If there's anybody here that wants to know 100% without a doubt that you're going to heaven, raise your hand. If you're online, you can comment online. We would love to pray with you. In Matthew, Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. The opportunity is there for you to knock on that door. And when it's open for you, the angels will rejoice. For another child of the king will come home with him when he returns. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I need your forgiveness. And I believe and know that you took my place and you paid the price for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead to make me new and prepare a place in heaven so that I can be in your presence forever. I surrender my will to yours. Come into my life and take control and forgive me of my sins. I place my trust in you and you alone for my salvation. And I accept you and I thank you for your free gift of eternal life. Amen. We hope you enjoyed today's message from New Life Christian Fellowship Church. And don't forget, we live stream the entire service at 11 o'clock every Sunday morning on Facebook. So you don't miss any upcoming videos, don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day, and until next time, may God be with you.